Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech. In this example, we're going to do a root locus sketch in a quick design problem all by hand and then check it using RL tool. And this is the system we're going to consider. Our goal is to get the dominant complex pole pair to have a damping ratio of 0.5. So let's go at it. We'll make the closed loop transfer function. Let's see, it's going to be the forward path over 1 plus the forward path, so what I'll get is 2ks plus 1 over s squared plus 4k plus 2ks plus 1. I can now extract the characteristic equation, which is the, den the denominator, and I'll go ahead and write it in this form, s squared plus 1 plus k and all the stuff that does not have k in it, like so. And what I need to do is to get this in this form, k times g loop. So I'll divide everything by s squared plus 1. And lo and behold, I'll get k times 2s plus 4 over s squared plus 1. Now I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to factor out this 2 and define a new k basically like this. I'll go 2k s plus 2 over s squared plus 1 and finally I'll write this as 1 plus I'll call it k bar s plus 2 over s squared plus 1. And what we'll do is we'll make the root locus for k bar and at the very end when we pick the value of k bar off of that root locus then we'll convert it into k by noting that 2k is equal to k bar. So we'll need that little equation later. Okay, so what do we have? We have a g loop is equal to s plus 2 over s squared plus 1. We have m which is the number of zeros is 1 and n the number of poles is 2. What this tells us is that we only have one asymptote. The number of asymptotes is equal to 1 and it is going to be the real axis. So we don't even have to do too much with asymptote calculations. Well, let's plot out what we have so far. We have some complex poles at plus minus 1. So I'll put an x there and an x here. And those are actually k bar equals 0 points. And we have a 0 at negative 2 right there. And that is a k bar equal infinity point. Now let's put the root locus on the real axis. We don't have any here, but we do have root locus here. Well, that's interesting because there's no root locus there right now. So somehow it has to get from these k bar equals zero points into that real axis. So somehow it's going to get from these k bar equals zero points into the real axis. So what we have to figure out is angles of departure there and where it enters the real axis here. So let me get rid of this because that's surely not right. Now let's see. So let's go after the angles of departure first. All I have to do is get one. So I'll go after this one. I'll draw this arrow up to it. Draw this arrow up to it like so. And then I will note that The phase of the loop transfer function at any point on the root locus S0 is equal to plus minus 180 degrees. I'll just call it 180. What that means is that the sum of all the phases at the zeros minus the sum of all the phases at the poles is equal to 180. At this point, what I'll do is I'll define this angle. I have to draw a little reference line there as phi P1. I'll call this angle phi z1, and I'll call the angle associated with this pole to some point infinitesimally close to that k bar equals zero point as phi p2. And that's the thing we're going to solve for, and that's the angle of departure. So if I write this out, we have phi z1 minus phi p1 minus phi p2 equals 180. Okay, well, what's phi z1? Well, that's the inverse tangent of 1 over 2. Beautiful. 
VP1, I love it, it's 90 degrees, and VP2 is what we're going to solve for. So VP2, if we work all this out, is about 116 degrees. Great. So now I know that my angle of departure is roughly, it's almost, right along that little leg of the X. So somewhere like so. So I can draw that little ray and this little ray. Wonderful. The only other thing I have to find is where that root locus intersects the real axis. And we call that an angle of departure or angle of arrival point. And the way to calculate that is you go DGL DS equals zero, solve that for all these different values of s, and then see which ones make sense. So that would be d ds of s plus 2 over s squared plus 1, and that's s squared plus 1 minus 2s, s plus 2, all over s squared plus 1 squared, but I really don't care about that because I'm going to set it equal to zero. So what I get is minus s squared minus 4s plus 1 equals 0. And what that says is that the two roots of that equation are negative 4 plus minus square root of 16 plus 4 over 2, or negative 2 plus minus square root of 5. And that is roughly negative 4.2 and 0.24. So let's go back to our plot and see which ones make sense. Well 0.24 surely doesn't make sense. That would be over here and there's we've already concluded there's no root locus there. So that's bogus. But negative 4.2 is right about here and that makes perfect sense. So we actually have just about everything we need to sketch the root locus. So let's just go ahead and do it. This is going to zoom up like so and then enter the real axis here. So I just have to use my artistic talents to connect these two segments. So I'll just go like so. How's that? And then do the same thing here. Look at that. Beautiful. And there we have a nice sketch of the root locus. Now if we want a damping ratio of zeta equal 0.5, then what we would need to do is to put the closed loop poles having an angle with the imaginary axis of about 30 degrees. So one way to do that would be, let's see, I'll just kind of rough it out. And this is a sketch after all, somewhere around here. Right, it's at negative one, it's up two point five ish. So if I look at this ray, this angle theta, sine theta equals zeta. So this gives us a zeta of a roughly point five. And where that closed loop pole is is at negative one plus minus 2.5j. Now all we have to do is figure out the value of k that puts the root locus there. So what I'm going to do is, is erase this because I want to keep that plot visual and I'll just hog out a little bit of space like so and we'll do our, our k calculation. It goes like this. The magnitude of the loop transfer function is 1 over k. And the way that I'm going to get the magnitude of that loop transfer function is I'm going to draw little segments like this from all my poles and zeros up to that point and I'll label them L1, L2, and I'll call that one L3. The magnitude of GL is the product of all those L's associated with the zeros divided by the product of all those L's associated with the poles. So it would be L1 over L2 and L3, and that's equal to 1 over K. Or I could say K is equal to L2, L3 over L1. And what do we get from that? Well, let's see. L2 
is the square root of 1 squared plus, let's see, 1, 2, 3 and a half squared. And L3 is the square root of 1 squared plus 1 and a half squared divided by the square root of 2 squared, that's 4, plus 2.5 squared. And if I do all that, what I'll get is a k about, actually this is k bar, by the way, let's fix that. k bar is about 2.4. And so what that tells me is that k, which was equal to k bar over 2, should be 1.2. Wow, so we've got it. So we have a proportional controller, k equal 1.2, puts our closed loop poles at that location. Now let's check it out with the RL tool and see how close we came. So here is our loop transfer function. Call it GL, use the TF command, and it was 2, 4. I'm not going to factor that quantity out in, uh, in this. So the root locus we create here will be the root locus that is actually for K, not K bar. And we'll just use RL tool. Oh, beautiful looking root locus. Let's throw a grid on it. There's all these zeta lines. I'm just going to grab hold of this with my little hand and drag it until I'm, I'm watching the damping ratio down here at the bottom of the plot where it says damping. I'm going to dra drag it until I get 0.5. Now what it shows is the closed loop poles will be at negative 1.2, 2.1. So I was a little bit off with my sketch, but that's okay. Um, it was just a sketch after all. And if I look at my compensator editor, I can see that my gain, though, was right about 1.2. So that's good. So just to summarize, we started out with a forward path transfer function that had the k buried inside it in several different places. And then we expanded that out and extracted the proper loop transfer function to do the root locus with. Then we sketched it all out, all by hand, and came up with the value of k that put the closed loop poles with a damping ratio of 0.5. Did a little check in MATLAB, found that the sketch was a little sketchy, but that our gain calculation was pretty good. Well, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks again for watching.